in chapter nine, we deal with hypothesis testing. So what is hypothesis? And I looked that up in the in the dictionary and it said it's a, it's testing to draw conclusions. If observation and experimentation show a conclusion to be false, the hypothesis must be false. So we're going to test data to see if it meets our expectations. And if it does, we'll, we'll accept the hypothesis. If not, we will reject it. So an overview of hypothesis testing, first of all, we're going to establish our hypothesis. In other words, what's accepting criteria and what's rejecting criteria. Then we're going to talk about a one-tail test. We're going to talk about a possibility of error and then a two-tail test. And then we're going to go back and when we don't have adequate samples, and we're talking about less than 30, we're going to go use that T distribution table again that we used in previous chapters. So we're, the testing, a statement that we're going to call an hypothesis is made. A sample is then taken in an effort to establish whether or not the statement is true. So what is a null hypothesis? We're going to call that H0. And it's a statement to be tested. Alternative, it's the opposite. If the null hypothesis is proved, the alter alternative has to be false. An example, H0, some function is, machine is functioning properly. On an alternative hypothesis, or HA, the machine is not functioning properly. I put this slide in here because this is what we're going to be looking at. The 0.05 here, first of all, is, is the, what, 95%? We're going to look at 0.05. So on a one-tail side, when we're looking at only one side of the bell-shaped curve, where we're testing to, again, a one-tail test, we're going to call that, Z-critical, it has to be inside of 1.65 on our z-score. We're going to call that our z-critical. We're going to go through the math on our samples, and we're going to determine our z-stat, just like we have in the past. And we're going to call that z-stat, and that's 1.07. 1.07 being within the negative 1.65, or our z-critical, we're going to accept this null hypothesis. So keep this in mind. If we're going to look at a two-tail test, we could take that 95% confidence that we're going to look at, our alpha of 0.05, divide that by 2, put 2.5% two on the left-hand side and 2.5% on the right-hand side. Obviously, our Z-critical will change at that point. This slide is really just a reference reference to always use. If we're going to look at a one-tail test and we're going to be measuring on the left-hand side or the lower side of the bell-shaped curve, our H0 or our null hypothesis, the mean is going to be equal to or greater than our alpha. If we're looking at a single tail test or a one tail test on the upper side, a, the null hypothesis, the mean has to come in equal to or less than A. If we're looking at a two tail, keep this in mind. It's always going to be equal to. And then there will be some level on the right and some level on the left that we're measuring that it has to be equal to. An example, Montclair Motors has been troubled by a consumer group's concern that their axles are breaking too easily. So the axle spec calls for an average braking strength of at least 5,000 pounds with a standard deviation 
of 250 pounds. So what is our known and our alternative hypothesis? First of all, the null hypothesis, the mean of our sample, has to be equal to or greater than 5,000. Alternative, it would be less than 5,000. And that would be the mean of the population that we're testing. So to develop that one mean test, we're going to have to have a sampling distribution of the, or a, of the sample mean. We're going to look at the sample results. We're going to choose a significance level. We're going to establish a decision rule and apply the decision rule, and then we're going to accept or reject the null hypothesis. That's the steps we're going to go through. So we've got our bell-shaped curve. We've got our mean of 5,000. We're going to do a sample size of 250. The specification says that the standard deviation can be 250. Now we have to choose a significance level. The value we choose most commonly, 0.05 or 5%, will label, label as alpha. And that means that the probability, the value that defines just what we mean by unlikely sample results under an assumption that the null hypothesis is true. So now we've established our what we referred to, if you think back to that first slide, as Z critical, 0.05. If we think back, 0.05, the Z critical, if we go back to our tables, it's going to be 1.65. Now we have to do our testing to get our Z stat score. We've got our Z critical. And now we're going to do the testing to determine what the Z-stat is. And this is what we're showing here. We're going to reject it if it's to the left-hand side of the, eight, of the null hypothesis. We do not reject if it's to the right-hand side of the null hypothesis. So the company plans to recall a random sample of 50 cars out of the 10,000 that were sold. The sample results provide evidence that the average braking strength is now below 5,000 pounds. The company will conduct the recall at a cost of 25 million. Now we talked about that braking strength of 200 or 5,000 pounds, but remember we have a standard deviation of 250, and we've de we've determined our Z critical position to be at. 95% or 0.05 uh, to the left hand side of that. So our significant level being alpha at 0.05, we go to the tables and we find that 0.05, the Z critical, is negative 1.65. So if it's below 1.65, we're going to reject. And we're going to have to rework all of those motors that were sold. That's what this slide here is showing us. We've, our mean is 5,000 pounds, our Z critical is 1.65 based on our alpha of 0.05. So now we need to come up with our Z stat position. We've done this formula many times before. And we go through and we determine that our position, our sampling distribution is negative 2.49. So our Z-scat score is going to be negative 2.49. Our Z-critical was 1.65. We're outside of acceptable limits. So 2.49 being less than 1.65. We're going to have to reject the null hypothesis.
That means that the, we cannot, it, the, the axles are breaking too soon and we're going to have to go through the rework process. Another way to compute that rule is the formula given here and you're going to work that on a couple of problems. It's just another means of doing the same thing that we've done in the past. Uh, in this particular case, we, we've we got uh, 49.12 is less than C, C. We can't, we still have to go through the rejection process. P values, same type of process that we've looked at before. Where do we go on the tables to get the P table? Again, just a means of doing that. We found that our p-value for Z, Z stat is 4962. Uh, our p-value here is 1423. We're going to be rejecting it. So the test procedure that we've gone through, we've stated our null and alternative hypothesis. We've chosen a test stat and significant level for the test. We've completed the value for the test stat for a from uh, our sample, and we've applied the appropriate decision rule. Going to the two-tail test, and if you recall at the beginning, I, sh I shared that the null hypothesis, it's always going to be equal to in this formula. The primary difference here is when we've determined what alpha is, what we've determined what the significance level is, we're going to have to divide that by two and put half of it on each side of the mean, as shown here, our two-tail test. We got alpha divided by two, half of it on the left and half of it on the right. So we've got control limit. We got our Z critical lower, Z critical upper, and then we got our our Z, or our critical upper, critical lower that we're going to be measuring to. In, in this example, if we would take that 0.05 and set it, okay, it, we're looking at two tails, so you can have, it can break too easily or too hard. In either case, we're going to reject it. And we came up with a Z stat. 2.49 because we've split that in half now. I'm sorry, the Z, the Z critical is, is going to be uh, 1.96 upper and lower. Z stat comes out to negative 2.49, so we're still going to reject the null hypothesis. Now, when we have less than 30 in the sample, what are we going to do? We're going to go look at that t-table distribution that we've looked at before. And we take our sample size, subtract one from it, and that becomes our t-critical position. As shown here. And if we just go look at the, the t-distribution tables, We've got a alpha of 0.05. We've got degrees of freedom of 10, which is our sample size, minus 1 or 9. And if we go to the tables, that will give you a 1.833. Same conditions, we've got a T stat that we've determined to be 1383. So that, in this case, we're going to end up passing the null hypothesis. Hope this gives you a quick and easy review of what hypothesis testing is. Best of luck.